Um, welcome everybody. Thank you for being here. Thank you for joining me in this work. Oh my goodness. So as we just arrive, some of you have had a day. It's Friday. Some of you like me just woke up. Getting started with the day only a few hours ago. Let's, uh, let's bring ourselves here. Just touching base with the open hands of this moment. It's very open. Here we are coming to this moment in this inquiry circle, ready to take a look, be listeners of that mind, our minds that have been so busy, so speedy and fast, whatever the topics. Just peace on this circle today, allowing ourselves to be here fully and whatever that means, bringing the mind and our feelings, memories, projections into the future and feeling the body. So just take a deep breath. And relax the body. Just feel where it touches whatever you're sitting on, whatever's holding you. Resting, resting the, resting the body, resting the muscles, noticing they are all a part of reality. where in this moment, we can let it all be here, everything we've ever experienced. In this moment, all is well, all is okay. And we're inviting in the beginning of our circle, inviting in any troubles, any troubles that we feel like have been percolating in there. Maybe they just appeared. Just noticing. Okay, that anything's coming in, difficult feelings, concerns about our lives, what's happened, relating the conversation we're having with reality. Where has it been? Mm. What would we like to look at? What wants to be inquired into today? What's coming forward? Just noticing that. Okay, if there's lots of voices wanting to come in. At the very beginning, I'm gonna write a judge or neighbor worksheet here. Capturing the mind on paper, so useful. Like manifesting. It seems odd to manifest the stressful thoughts, but what gold. 
thoughts and we can work with them out in the open. So just notice a situation, something that's happened where a disturbance happened, a disturbance occurred. You don't like it. Something's uncomfortable. And it's okay always to go back far in time. Sometimes that what that's what's wanted. It's taking a look, it's an old relationship. And sometimes it's currently something underway. Just to see where there's been a clutch, a grip, a tightness. So welcome everybody. If you're just joining, we're about to write a judge your neighbor worksheet. So if we think of this as a meditation, it's very open, very much listening, noticing it's okay to feel all those uncomfortable feelings, inviting them to be here inviting them in, letting them bubble to the surface. Why am I troubled? What has caused disturbance? Just pausing on that moment, let's take a moment. Okay to see if it's relating to a person. Okay to watch if it's relating to an object like body, a condition in the body. A thing like money. Just see. I am troubled with this because. And, and just see what comes. What comes after that prompt? I'm troubled with, you can even fill it in, person, thing, what you're looking at because And then writing it down, writing it down. We'll see what's there. What wants to be investigated today? So noticing what you find disturbing, there it is. Here's how I'd write it. You know, you just wrote it. How do you want what you're looking at to change? We never have to be logical or friendly or politically correct. We're listening to see no matter how extreme, whatever that sounds like. If it's a demand or a tantrum, okay. Let the feelings speak. How do you want what you're looking at to change?
and notice if what you're looking at that you want to change is you, something about you. Just notice it's where our minds travel so often. See if it's in relationship to something else. In response to that other thing, that other person. Just see if that's there. Oh, there's always back and forth, a back and forth. Which is often so important to see. You want me to change in that situation. And what was going on there? Who am I talking to? What am I relating to? And just see, because my trouble is going to also be with what I'm relating to. Very helpful to catch. How do I want what I'm looking at to change? No editing. Number three, what is my advice to this person, condition, thing, place that I, what is, what is my advice that I would share or give so that this change could happen. Should, shouldn't, what do I recommend? He should, she should, it should. What would assist the change? Number four, love this question. In order for you to be happy, in order for you to be happy, sometimes hard to imagine being happy in the situation. Just whatever happy would be there, peaceful, settled, resolved, joyful. In order to actually be happy in the situation, what do you need from who you're looking at, the thing you're looking at? In order for me to be happy, I need them to. I need it to. Really give yourself what you would need in order to be happy. Even if the mind says that'd be impossible, just notice. Good 
would that person say these words? What do I want them to say, think, feel? All of it. What do I need? And number five, what do I think of what I'm looking at? So short list, just simple description, usually a word, comma, another word. What do I think of them in this situation? Describe what you see. What do I think of it? What do I think of her, him? And the last question, what is it in this situation that you never want to experience again? If you could have your say about it, I don't ever. We just get to let ourselves hear that wide statement. I don't ever want to experience, I don't ever you fill in the blank, what comes next? Love capturing these thoughts, like slowing it down. The mind clutches and says, no, don't like the situation. It's so helpful to give words to what is not liked, to what we're saying, what the interpretation, the assessment is. then we can investigate and do the work. Okay. So who would like to, who would like to do the work and everyone, you've got this fabulous judge your neighbor worksheet. You can take it into your day with you, into your world. Continue on into this wonderful inquiry. Who would like to do the work now? You can raise your hand or you can wave. Yeah, Tiffany, awesome, my dear. Um, so the thought I'm working with is me and this um, guy and I'm having this thought about needing to be special or mm. I'm needing to think that I'm special or um, unique, different from them all. Like somehow it's like a lot of pressure on me to, to show up in a certain way. And I get really hard on myself if like they don't change their behavior. That must mean that I didn't do enough to like affect them or ah uh, yes <laughs> make them want to be different or better such a good one i need him to think i'm special i need him to think i'm special all right does that sound just right the way you said it yeah we hear it in your head okay so you know, everyone follow along. 
I mean, you can even put your answers in the chat if you want to, you know, just let this be your work too. Is there a person that you need them to think you're special? <laughs> See some thumbs up, Tiffany, thumb up. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. All right, so just seeing that person. Boy, it just makes me think of, um, I've had this thought, bosses, teachers, mom and dad, attractive people, potential mates. <laughs> yeah. Right? Okay. So you need him to think you're special. Is it true? Yes. Can you absolutely know? You need him to think you're special. No, I can't know that. Mm. I love looking at that word special, you know, everyone's going to have their own definition in a way, but you know the feel of it. So what happens when you think it? I need him to think I'm special and you're not sure he does. How do you react? Um. I notice myself like hold myself back from like wanting to ask him questions like for example like oh would you do this with anyone else or like uh just seeking validation mm. yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I notice it, it ties in a lot to like question asking, like, um, like, how do you feel around me? Like kind of analyzing them, seeing their reaction towards me. Mm -hmm. What would you have? My situation Go ahead. I was just saying, like, it was on a phone call, so this thought um, makes me just kind of, like, listen and lean in. So, like, oh, is, how could I turn that into, like, <laughs> or how can I, like, feed off of that somehow? Mm. <laughs> yeah. See, what you'd have if you had this specialness that you crave, you know, like just noticing. If I was special, for sure, what would I have? I wouldn't be like seeking it from others. I feel like I'm just seeing an image of me like <sighs> relaxing. It's like, oh, I know now. I know that I am. So like it's all I don't know like all mm -hmm. if I knew I was I could relax it's an amazing question though like what would I have what would be guaranteed what would be solid there you know if I was special what wouldn't happen like you said it wouldn't happen Love noticing the specialness thing. Seems really good. Seems like I'd have something if I had this, if I was special to him. Um, 
like he wouldn't treat me like he treats other people like he'd treat me differently so. that i'd get treated i get different treatment yeah i expect myself to to like have these magical powers <laughs> that, like, um, I just like put him under a spell or something. All of a sudden he's like, wants to act different or be different. It's, me. it's a lot of pressure on me. It's like um, a lot of expectations on me. It honestly feels really exhausting. Mm -hmm. So good to see though, if I do just the right thing at just the right time and just the right way, I will be special, I'll achieve that. So I go to work, my mind goes to work on how. It's like, if I get the outcome that I want, that means that I'm special, like yes. something right. Yeah. <laughs> Which is interesting. It's like a looking towards externally to see whether I'm special pretty often. Like whether it be in their movements or words that they say, it's never like quite sure. It feels like unsatisfied. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's like, for example, this guy, like he's complimented me like up and down and like I haven't received it. Like I. I'm unable to really receive what's happening. Mm. <laughs> Good to see just this interest. I love some of other shares here. You know, what happens? What do I, what do I, what would I get if I had specialness? I'd be more confident. If I had more information, it would help me relax. If I yeah. was special, it's like I get get a propeller that helps me through the world. I'd have trust, protection, and safety, and divine providence. The chosen one. I'd be bored if I'm not special. If I know everything and have all of the information, then I'll be safe. So good to see. Comfortable in my body and my existence. I'd feel important. Yeah. See how far back that thought goes. I need that person to think I'm special. I know you're seeing it with this current relationship and you just see, you know, how far back it goes. When was it born? When did I first have that thought? I'm getting like an image of my dad and I. Um, and me like running on the beach to him. Hmm. Mm -hmm. And he's like calling my name and I just remember being really excited. Mm. So feeling that special contact, just aware, and then the mind says, and I, I need this specialness. Mm. I need it to keep going. <sighs> yeah, you're right about that. It's like, in the moment it feels like very high, um, you know, cause they're like communicating and talking with you. They're talk like he's communicating with me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's like a gripping, it's very, it's like a holding on. I gotta keep this. Yeah, this is good. <laughs> yeah. And also the thought comes in like, I need to know, I need to know. Yeah. I like what that uh, one person said just about like having all the information. 
just like then I'll be safe or confident or something. Yeah. I'll, uh, I'll get a pass if I'm special. <laughs> so keep noticing what happens when you believe the thought. I need him to think I'm special. And I love that others are sharing. If I have the need to feel special, it separates me from others. So noticing that. I want to be separated out, you know. The, I just turn out to be separated from others. I'm also feeling like like I could actually have this thing and it could like never leave me. But just because someone is like showing up in the way that they are, doesn't mean that I've like lost it or something. Yeah. Yeah. Powerful to notice fear, just fear doesn't mean it, doesn't mean it's true. And if I'm thinking it, I need that person to think I'm special. If they don't, I just pick up, there they do something, say something, think something, or they aren't there. You know, they, they're busy. <laughs> yeah. I get anxious. <laughs> I wonder if this means I'm not special. Okay, and somebody noticing in the past in situations where I couldn't be special for winning or achieving something, I'd make myself special via a tantrum and acting out as a child. I remove other person's, the other person's hum humanity and turn them into a Disney character for my life's pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> Fantasy. <laughs> Yeah. 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 Ah, and somebody noticing feeling special as a component of revenge for her. Take that, mom. Your husband thinks I'm special. <laughs> that's that's powerful. Mm. So, yeah. Do a lot of efforting, living inauthentically to change for their approval. Yeah, I noticed I use I use like their compliments as like a self worth. Like I'll tell people like, oh, this is what they said about me, and yeah, it definitely feels like a revenge thing. Like, do they think that about you? I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it shows up that way for some people. Proving, I'm gonna prove it, I'm gonna prove it. I think somebody believed I wasn't special and now I'm gonna prove that I am. Mm. I need him to think I'm special. And just noticing this idea of specialness, I think I'm going, something's gonna be easier. Something will be safer. Something will go more smoothly. I'll have success. If I'm special, I'll receive attention or love. It feels very conditional, like for me to know this, I need a certain thing to happen or for him to do a certain thing. Really helpful to see. And that might be different for all of us. It's like if they do that, then I'll know I'm special. If they don't do it, I'll start to doubt. Very powerful. If just the absence of this thing that I think proves specialness, and start the fear. If I believe I need to be special. They're not doing it. I'm scared. I 
I'm scared that this means something about me. Yes. Yeah. If I'm not special, oh no. You can see the images that your mind shows you, but if you're not special, what will happen? What's, what's the danger of not being special when you're believing the specialness is, is really good? Like I'm not needed in his life. And if you weren't needed, then what would happen? It would just mean something about me. Like, it's so yeah. good to see that part, you know? So if somebody needs me, that's the way I can know I'm special. If I provide something they need, it can be a lot of work. I don't know, like, the fear is, just kind of, I guess, being like tossed to the side. Uh -huh. Yeah. Um, Uncared about. Tossed to the side. I noticed this, like, detrimental tone to it, like, um, this means bad for my, like, lovability, like, my future ability to, like, yeah. connect, with, connect with others or have other people, like, have another experience with someone. Yeah. Powerful to see that in this in this inquiry, you know, what it means. If, if I'm not special to this person, I might not be special to anybody in the future. I might have to, I don't know, just sends a fear. Um, wonderful share here. If I'm not special to my sons, I'm a failure as a mother. Yeah, I need to be special. Need to be special. I love noticing how we see it's possible to not be special. It's a fragile, it's a fragile state, right? When you're believing I need that specialness, I need that perspective of somebody seeing me as special. Mm -hmm. I really believe it's possible to not be special and that that's dangerous and this fragile you cannot be special at any moment, depending on the situation, depending on the move or the, the look or the behavior of that other person. Sometimes this is one of those that really goes back far with people, just where it was born, you know, really need to be special. It's really important. Just noticing that. And that it's possible not to be. Okay. So you just see how you treat that person and yourself when you're believing this thought. I need them to think I'm special. Yeah. Allison noticing if I'm not special as a child, then they won't love me or care for me. Like noticing the trail of that. And if they don't love or care for me, I will be abandoned. And if I'm abandoned, I will suffer. And if I suffer in abandonment and no care, I will die. Oh, and you said I could die. Feels like I somehow gained this title, like a 
title that I can't get rid of. Um, like, like that one is like unlovable. Like the thing, like I gained this, this flaw that is just like, it's decided like I can't do anything about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've got this handicap or this thing that isn't good. I won't be protected if I'm not special. I'll be invisible if I'm not special. I may noticing when I believe I need someone, especially romantic partner, to think I'm special. I choose on purpose who I perceive as most special and put myself in competition with them for specialness. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'll get with that person who's very special. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Just everyone noticing, you know, Tiffany here too, just noticing how you treat the world, you treat this person, the feeling in the body when you're believing this. I need them to think I'm special. I need that. Just the concern, the worry. Yeah, I could see where it goes to, like, I mean, this is like my identity. It's like growing up, I, I just wanted to be special at all times. I liked different bands from people. I liked different colors. I never really wanted to be a part of the crowd. I think it, I thought that I was going to get like care. And if I wasn't standing apart from the crowd, then I wouldn't be, yeah, noticed or cared for. So good to see. Yeah. Like the mind comes up with its strategies. In your case, you know, I'm going to like different stuff. I'm going to do it differently. Yes, strategizing, even in that situation with the person, like, I'm like, okay, how can I get this thing? It apparently is not there. I'm perceiving it as not there. Yeah. Yeah. Have someone shares, yeah. when I have this thought, the way I treat people is desperate. I treat the world. That's how I feel. And man, then I have to be so careful. There are so many ways to do it wrong and lose favor. The way I treat people is separate, fearful. And I believe I need them to see me as special. I tend to attract people on superhuman enlightenment journeys and rock star dreams. <laughs> Suspicious and paranoid. Okay, just anxious. So bringing your whole self in, you know, little child self <clears throat> with those memories and this current situation watching, who would you be without the story? I need him to think I'm special. I need them to think I'm special. If you just weren't able to think that or believe it for a moment. And see what it would I feel like. More willing to join the crowd. Mm -hmm. like it wouldn't seem as unattractive to be like a drop in the bucket, like part of part of everyone. Yeah, I wouldn't feel like I needed to separate myself from everyone. Hmm. 
or like earn something, like do something to earn or like differentiate myself from other people. Like, like different things. Wow, I can see how this thought is like really had me reacting in a way that I would just like separate myself from people. Yeah, yeah. It's got a strange um, kind of pervasive, fearful aspect to it. I need to earn, I need to do, and without the thought, oh my goodness. How would I even be? What's that like? I really didn't believe I need anyone to think I'm special. I just wouldn't mean anything from him. I'd see what he was doing and how he was living his life and who he chose to interact with as like, um, not, not meaning anything about me. It's not personal. It's a human being living their life, sharing some of it with you, the stories. Sounds like. Yeah, he's sharing. <laughs> it's like we have this container of like a moment where it's just him and I. And I'm like without something. So without the thought, someone sharing so calm, so cool so sacred, so special, <laughs> without the thought. I need them to think I'm special. <laughs> I would just be myself. Clarity, openness in my own business, open to myself, supportive of me. I would not be desperately seeking approval. With the thought, I chase instead of allowing what comes and there is no relaxation. So I'd be grateful for my life. I would see him as showing up, sharing, sacred, privileged to receive whatever he gives, however he gives it. I'd see it and appreciate it and not have to change it. Yeah, like that's as much as he can give right now. Yeah. Um, all, like this one's, I feel like is really strong for me. It's like my whole life. Mm -hmm. Um, but like the little thing that I, that is coming to me is that I just wouldn't need to be different. And I think I'd be more open to sharing how I am like others. Hmm. Like, like, um, yeah, I'm, I'm just like that girl. Mm -hmm. like, yeah, I, I like all the same things as her, like, or similar things as her. It doesn't feel as much as like a striving to be differentiated. Don't need to stand out, be obvious, look different, separate. It can be quite a vacation. <laughs> Yeah, this is exciting. I definitely want to sit with some more. Yes. I love someone sharing. I could give up the insidious manipulations to have others assess me as special. And therefore, I could give that attention to myself as perhaps enough. I'd be held and loved and lovable regardless. 
I wouldn't need to control him or his actions. I wouldn't need to be afraid of making mistakes and having love taken away. I wouldn't be playing God. I'd be safe no matter what he does or how he moves through the world. Without the thought that I need to be special, I might still have a boyfriend or I might have never had one in the first place. <laughs> Could be nice to start now without the thought. And I think I'd choose a less special partner <laughs> to see who knows. Okay. <laughs> okay with being normal and boring. Normal and boring sounds nice. <laughs> sounds relaxing. And just for a moment, visit this one. And I love Tiffany that you said, I'm going to keep considering this one because it's so such a strong one. You know, it's been in so many ways of relating. Just take a moment to go back, go back all the way to wherever that time was when you first began to have the thought. Here you are with your dad on the beach. And without the thought, I need him to think I'm special. And I just love noticing he already does. Yeah. There's something about the human mechanism that, you know, the that happens in the presence of others. Like specialness. Yeah, you know, you kind of remember Byron Katie once talking about being with her grandchildren and saying about her a grandbaby. Oh, you are the most beautiful baby in the entire world. And that, then she thought, well, that's not really true. But I love doing that. <laughs> it's like, but with this one, you know, it's just the way it comes out. Just sort of the natural <laughs> way it comes out. <laughs> because it's just the thought process somehow, or the human mechanism or the biological urge or something. Who knows? The yeah. Thing. Yeah. I feeling like I even make him special like he becomes special he becomes really special and like mm. uh, I put a lot of attention and focus on him and he becomes the special one and I just have no no more energy for myself <laughs> yes yes yeah I can see that as like yeah so if I don't need him to think I'm special, so relaxed, so open. As someone says here, I'm connected with everything. There's equality. Every dog is the best dog in the world. Everyone is beautiful when I'm connected to me. Yeah, no specialness required. So a turnaround. I actually don't need him to think that. Could there be an advantage to not being special? Don't need him to think it. How could that be true? He's not depending on me like 24 seven. <laughs> so like, I don't need him anymore. That's a good benefit. <laughs> yes, yes. On the phone with him or powerful benefit yeah somebody i'm free to not be dependent on it's also like um the pressure's off of me it's like pressure's off of finally like oh he can go pick someone who he thinks is special like if he picked me and there is that pressure to be special and different all the time and be like just a lot of work. So I'm like, <laughs> yeah. like without this, um, so, oh, yeah, yeah. It's, it's like, yeah, it's like you could be spared, spared from your own inner <laughs> effort. <laughs> I'm not his caretaker. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Like, 
he's he's got other people for that just not um yeah wow <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's so funny. a lot of freedom in that a lot of freedom for both i don't need him to think i'm special yeah, I know I'm I'm special. He keeps coming to interact with me for some reason. I don't <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> I'm chosen yeah. in this moment to talk on the phone with him. <laughs> yes. In that moment, enjoying enjoying this a conversation, you know, just. Uh, conversation happening how how wonderful conversation ends how wonderful yeah and how special that he wants to get off the phone like <laughs> oh, thank you for more space for myself mm. it's like this one she deserves she deserves that love that if the person, um, you know, off they go. Oh, good. I I like silence. Yeah. I like time with myself. And not efforting to be special for this person. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I can relax. So I love the turnaround in there. I need me to think I'm special. You know, to myself, to myself. Yeah. Yeah, I do. But he can do what he's doing and he can still be special. Yeah. <clears throat> Someone says here, free to notice what's going on in me, free to have an authentic relationship with me and the other. I don't abandon myself when we disagree. I'm the only one who can give me attention forever. <laughs> Maybe I can, I can open myself to how he reacts to me and what he wants to do around me. Hmm. Like if I'm not striving to be special and say, I say something like that makes me, um, just like one of the others. Mm -hmm. you know, and mm -hmm. Yeah, I kind of like it gives it extends the freedom to him to be like, oh, I didn't know that about her. And maybe, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. It's like freedom to be seen almost. Um, Yeah. A lot of freedom coming in here for your, ourselves, for the others, without this thought. Yeah, turning this thought around allows me to breathe more fully, Bonnie. Free to notice and accept the way of things without my stories. I can drop every mask and not care who sees me as I am. I'm open and willing to being just like the rest of everyone. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> just like everyone else. I'm open. I'm oh. willing to be just like everyone else. I look forward to being just like everyone else. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, like he's He's going to show up how he wants to show up and maybe he shows up that way with everyone else. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and it's just staying in our own business with, you know, life coming and going, people coming and going. Here I am staying with myself being special to me, 
And I love noticing sometimes we believe the thought they need me to think they're special. And that can also be stressful. They need me to think they're special. That we just reverse it, you know, I'm gonna make you feel like you're special. I think I'm, the, the ties will remain intact or something will happen and they'll be okay. And helpful to question that one when it becomes stressful. I mean, just notice they may not need that. They really may not need it. So strange, but uh, funny way to say it, but it just has occurred like in my own work with my kids, it has to be okay for me to die. Because that happens sometimes, right? And actually, at some point, if things go in the order of like just biology, uh, aging, I could die first. We always think that's the best story. It doesn't always go like that. And what have you found, like in the turnaround, like when someone needs me to think that they're special? Um, I just love, I mean, it's a good one to question when it becomes stressful, like, oh, they're running that too, or um, I can relate, you know, I have a lot of compassion, compassion for that and noticing it's okay if no one thinks they're special. I, I already do think they're special. Look with my kids, you know. Don't need to let them know. Yeah. Yeah. It all depends on how you, you, the energy of it, you know, if you feel like you need to let them know and it's scary if they don't and everybody needs to know and. Yeah, like they're dependent. Yeah. 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 I definitely feel that like with my mom um like that pull the pull in like a worrisome way yeah you kind of like appease her yeah i need to let her know i need to let her know it's a good one to question <sighs> yeah it's just just to relax and have everybody have their own path of learning about specialness and <laughs> mediocrity <laughs> Or joining joining or being unique could could be that we don't need to know yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah like if she doesn't need to know mm -mm. that's kind of interesting to notice about someone else like noticing that she's okay yeah um like i'm okay not knowing if i'm special or not because I, I don't, I'm not told it every moment. Like, I'm, I'm still doing okay. <laughs> good to notice. <laughs> really good to notice. Yeah. Just taking that the edge off the piece of it being required. You know, it doesn't mean specialness doesn't happen in whatever form that shows up as, but it's just a, relaxing with it becoming um, a need for survival, happiness, all the things people mentioned at the beginning, you know, what would I have if the specialness thing goes on? Oh, I feel confidence, safety, security, success, peace. And skip the specialness and just have it now. Okay, very good one. So comments, um, thank you, Tiffany. Powerful thought. Thank you guys. Yeah, so comments after, anyone wanna share beautiful things in the chat here. Um, and uh, somebody saying, yep, they, they need me to think they're special and that, phew, that is worth questioning. And I'm actually sincerely special without the thought. And it's private and personal and intimate and unique. I see the sacred specialness in everything in the world I see and experience. 
a blade of grass, the floor, the honking her horns. So special, so sweet specialness arising right in front of you. The occasion of life. My kids are so over hearing how special they are from me. <laughs> Lots of eyes rolling and sighing. <laughs> uh, uh, it's great. Yeah. These are great. Like May, my recovery program is trying to tell me I'm just another bozo on the bus and I'm trying to prove I'm special making myself miserable. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So great. Lori, free to notice I'm basically okay and safe and being taken care of by everything. I'm free to appreciate others' gifts. <laughs> so lovely. So, so happy to hear that, Bonnie. It's just what I needed this morning. So thank you, Grace, Tiffany. All right. Wonderful. This is such a special experience. <laughs> this can't, can't be complicated. <laughs> yes, I have a dear old friend in the work um, facilitator for many years who says the two thoughts that boiled down. He felt like he had a very two most stressful thoughts starting young. And they permeated relationships until he found the work. And one was, I need to be special. <laughs> and the second one was, I'm not good enough. Mm -hmm. What a, having both of those running at the same time. Ooh, hard. You know? Basis of many relationships I have. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So thank you, Tiffany. Yes, May. Um, thanks, everyone. I just realized last night um, how I use spirituality to make myself feel special or seem special. Um, and my friend pointed out to me that like people can be spiritually awake just reading a book or watching a movie. They don't have to have a spiritual practice and it's just making me look at things very differently. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yes. I, I love that mentioning specialness, like it, kind of in, in the eyes of spirituality or in the eyes of God or reality or whatever it is we're we're looking in the eyes of the universe that we need to be special for that. Yeah, Eleni. Good morning, family. I just wanted to know if, if we had time to do the work on a quick thought or- yes, we do, yes, we do. If there's any other burning desires here, go for it. I just was raising my hand to do the work on something else. Love it, I think it's perfect. You're up. It's a, it's a very special, work <laughs> and I by that I mean totally ordinary um so let me know when, when we're ready if there's any more comments I don't want to interrupt that okay looks like there aren't I think we're I think it's perfect timing so thank yeah thank you Tiffany Tiffany so glad you're here so my worksheet is on this thing I have going on in my mind with these seeds that I'm trying to get planted for the summer to grow fruit and food. And there's something that is happening in my body every time I, I have the time and the thought to go and plant these seeds. And it's I'm scared with the seeds, with the seedlings, because they won't grow in time to bear fruit, vegetables. And it's like, I can't even put them in the ground because I'm just so sure that the, the squirrels are gonna get them or like something bad's gonna happen to my seeds. So I don't even plant them. And now it's June 11th and it's driving me nuts every day. It's eating me alive with these seeds. 
I want them to live, grow, not take too much work. Seeds should germinate, grow, produce fruit, vegetables. I need the seeds to help me grow, to germinate. The seeds are temperamental, weak, and babies, infants, helpless. I don't ever want to miss out on planting because I'm afraid I'll fail. Such a good one. So, you know, I won't get the results I want. It won't bear fruit. In this case, literally. But everyone can just find. I don't want to do it because there's this potential for it to not bear fruit. Something bad could happen. Noticing this with relationships and things that I want, jobs and projects of all kinds I won't, I won't get what I what I want that'll be taken away or interrupted it won't bear fruit okay so it's important to see you know this that would be very sad if it didn't bear fruit really don't like that idea. I'm against it not bearing fruit. So, is that true? Notice the image is in the future, you know, something's gone wrong. You've done all this work. So, a terrible situation. It didn't bear fruit. I'm against it not bearing fruit. Is that true? Can you say that one more time? I didn't hear the first part. Yeah. It's like almost as if you're in the future. There you are. And these things have happened. Something's happened. It hasn't gone perfectly. It hasn't gone well. I'm against this lack of fruit bearing. I don't like it. Is it true? it to bear fruit. I needed to have bared fruit and it didn't. Is it true? <sighs> no. How'd you find your no there? I felt the sickness in my stomach and I realized I'd be okay even if the squirrels ate all the tomatoes. Mm -hmm. So what happens when you think it? I need it to bear fruit. I have to have the result I want. What happens? I don't plant. I don't plant. I am so mad at myself. I look at the seeds and the envelopes on the counter and I put them in a nice little pile and I see images of all the soil little container things that are not planted. I see past images of all the seedlings that came up that I didn't water and then they didn't work. They didn't, I see images of the squirrels jumping all over my veranda and digging into things, the plant, the pots that I have with nothing in them. I don't, I don't go and buy or ask anyone for cage stuff for the planters. I feel so depressed and sad and mad. My heart hurts. 
I have past images of being in upstate New York and the deer coming and eating the tomatoes just as they started growing before I left the States. I make it mean something about my relationship with me, with others. My face hurts. I blame myself. Ah. Uh. I just see past images of this little kid that's just like, what's the point? What's the point? I have a past image of my dad tantruming, like, him saying, what's the point? What's your point? Get to the point. I can't make anyone happy. Like a grown ass man tantruming. I feel so. <sighs> petrified. In my body. In the hardening. And I, I also notice that I water the flowers. The flowers I'm okay with. I can take care of the flowers. But the seeds that have fruit, that have vegetables that potentially, it's like, I don't, I don't know how to deal with those. Mm -hmm. I like other the seeds. I'm like, I don't know, you're too, you're too much work. Mm -hmm. And then I say to myself, how are you ever going to have a baby if you can't even plant seeds? Mm. I, I could cry right now, but it's not coming yet. Mm. That's part of the reaction. Yeah. It's really hard. It's so powerful to notice the, this situation and then where it travels. I'm just amazing. What does it mean? What does it mean about me and, and even having a baby? Just amazing, you know? Yeah. I, I need it to bear fruit. I need it to go the way I want it to go. So disappointing. So disappointing. So who would you be without that story? You need it to go the way you want it to go. You need it to bear fruit. I notice everything set up for me. I'm not afraid of failing. I don't see any, I don't see life or experiences as failure. It doesn't really exist, failure. I'm proud of myself for even getting the soil ready and having the seeds. That's huge for me. Mm. Encouraged by the flowers instead of mad. It's okay to be noticing all the conditions, squirrels, whatever. I'm not against every little step in the out and I'm not against any outcome. I'm still engaged. I have to be in denial. Who am I without a thought? It has to go, it has to bear fruit the way I want it to go. Playful. Interested in my experience, like interested in watching myself give this experience to myself of learning and 
trying again and I have the thing I have the cover for the one barrel anyways mm. I would just be noticing it's Friday I have time to do this I'm not attached to the outcome it's a privilege to be able to attempt I have water rain barrels full of water for for watering I feel abundance and it's only June it's just getting hot in Canada and the seedlings are like just potential opportunities I'm not in control of if they grow or not or excited about practicing my part in just noticing the environmental conditions that I can do something about mm. Really share. I love being with the plants for as long as they have a life. Oh. See how much joy they give me. Gratitude. Such excitement with the zucchini flowers. Childlike. I wouldn't deliberately sabotage my efforts. I wouldn't. That's what the person said. Yeah. yeah. I wouldn't. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> That's so cool. Yeah. Be with the opening heart opens. I'm seeing this is the day for planting. Then there's a day for watering. You know, it like the passage of time and just the movement of it. You get to see. It's a surprise. I'm not against the outcome. I'm just in the middle of it. Learning. Learning. Everything. It's all learning experiences. With anything that I am imagining will bear fruit. And I'd be really gentle with with myself about it. Like I see those seeds as I would not be using force and self condemnation to plant them. It would be like, okay, guys, let's try this out. Yeah. Let's see how this goes. It's okay. You don't have to grow. You can stay in seed form as long as you want. But let's just try this out. Yeah. My heart feels lighter. My face doesn't scrumple up as much. Okay, then bring the conditions that are best and see what happens. Don't know. Yeah. So, <clears throat> I'm not against if they don't bear fruit. I mean, they, they won't. You know, I'm afraid of them not bearing fruit. So let's just go all the way. Say they don't. How could that be okay? Yeah, I'm, I'm open to them not bearing fruit. I think it, for mm -hmm. me, is that okay? Yes, yes, yes. Or, um, well, like I'm willing. Yeah, yeah, it happened, and it's happened. Well, I'm I'm open to it. I'm willing to have my anything I plant not bear fruit. Um, it will be better at trying and getting them out of those packets than just leaving them in the packets for the whole season. Um, mm. And I get to practice not being in control of the outcome. Mm -hmm. And they'll bear what they bear 
whether it's fruit to my mind or not, it, it, it will be enough, whether they just pop up that much or a whole beanstalk. I was just noticing I, I would have, you know, wouldn't, wouldn't that be interesting, the journey? I would have learned something just along the way that's not wiped out or diminished. You know, sort of like the process will live, will come alive. Even if there isn't fruit bearing, I would have learned something. And often the mind will stop right there. No fruit was born. And so it's a disaster, give up. <laughs> But you might say, oh, I see what happened. Okay. You'd bring in something new, something new to learn. It's like the baby learning to walk, falls down, doesn't just get up and walk first time. Oh, well, sure. Yeah. Could you imagine if we just like, <laughs> you failed once, stay on the ground forever. Yeah. Never trying that again. <laughs> what kind of demon is my thinking oh my gosh <laughs> that's the other turnaround my thinking is yeah. like against it never bearing fruit because it 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 blames itself it's like somehow it thinks it did it and it's to blame and it's at fault and therefore let's not even try and yeah like that image of my dad and that's the story I put on him when I was a kid that and I now I'm doing that to myself and it wasn't even my dad I didn't mean that with when I was a kid I have a worksheet there to do but it's like my thinking is against bearing fruit yeah. if it thinks that if it doesn't bear fruit it's gonna have to war with itself in the future yes and then I start worrying with myself right now. I see the packets and I hit myself, take the whip out. <laughs> oh, grace, literally grace. As I say, grace, amazing grace. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah. I love that Anne is sharing. Maybe it's progress just to open the package and hold the seeds in your hands oh, and love them. <laughs> That's a tradition in some cultures to really talk to them and hold them in your hands before you plant. Thank you so much, everyone. Yeah. Thank you, Eleni. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, myself. Yes. And I love Kelly sharing. I love the journey. It's so much fun learning about bugs and diseases and even about death and how it's all okay. I'm one of the plants. The body dies beautiful yeah and with anything you know what a great thing for us to take into our day you know just with, with this last inquiry you know, just saying anything that I wanted to bear fruit that project that thing that place I want to go that thing I want to do just what will I do just today maybe I only hold the seeds in my hand and open the packet <laughs> so movement movement like that beautiful balance of detachment and yes I'm going for something no I don't know how or when or what or which way okay not to know and so grateful that I even have the seeds they were gifted to me the soil was gifted to me the barrels to put them in it's like what is my life this is amazing I get to do this wow wow <sighs> And I can't fail. It's like so supported, all supporting me to try this and to, to do my best. Yeah. yeah, on that middle path, you know, not giving up, not aggressing, da, 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 just in the middle. Thank you, everybody. Anyone want to add anything before we close today? Very sweet to be with you. Thanks to you, Anne Lenny, for sharing. Really sweet to hear this work. Yeah, oh good. So glad, Anne. 
Yeah, it was interesting when you first started to share, my mind was like, really? Seeds? What? <laughs> and and it just went to such a beautiful and deep place. I love that um, you connected it to caring for children and all of that. And um, there's such such a connection. And, um, and I wrote in the chat also, um, I've heard of people who will hold seeds in their mouth or walk barefoot in the soil near them because then the seeds know what to draw up from the soil to give to you and that it's just this beautiful relationship. Mm, exciting. <laughs> Very sweet. Thank you. Yeah, Sarah. Let's push the ask to unmute button. There we go. Oh, thank you, Elaine. It, I've had a similar issue, uh, but the way it, the depth of it went into how um, that's something that I uh, can see in how I've built relationships with that fear and uh, of them not growing. So it really was a really such a wonderful way for me to see First of all, how I have this timidity around seeds, but also that it's okay to just do what I'm doing. And also that I, that I love seeds so much and mm -hmm. that now I see how strong it is in, in uh, my relationships that I can let that go. My relationships are just gonna come and go as they will. Yeah. So beautiful. So oh, beautiful. This is one of those something wonderful is happening today. Just something yeah. wonderful. Thank you. Yeah, very precious. Thank you, Sarah. Mm. Mm. <laughs> uh, something wonderful is happening. Don't we love it? <laughs> something wonderful is happening. <laughs> our our turnaround practice, a living turnaround. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and Eleni, the tiny seed knew that in order to grow, it needed to be dropped in dirt, covered in darkness, and struggle to reach the light. Sandra King, yeah, witnessing that physically in seeds and in so many other things. So many other things. All right, everyone, enjoy yourselves. Thank you. Always love being with you. Thank you. <laughs> Take care. Lots of love. Happy planting and growing, everyone. Yes. Thank you, everyone. Yes. Happy planting and growing. Thank you. <laughs>